All right, good afternoon, everyone. We'll call to order the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals regular meeting for September 27th, 2023. Uh, first item on our agenda is a determination of a quorum uh, with the five members of the board present. Uh, we do have a quorum today. Uh, we've got one uh, next item is a nomination and election uh, of the chair uh, for the BZA. I'll make a motion. Uh, I nominate Mr. Young as uh, being the chair. Second. Got a motion and a second. Everybody sure? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none, so thank you for that. Um, next, we'll move to the approval of the minutes from the June 28th, 2023 meeting. Uh, those minutes were provided to the board members. Are there any changes necessary to those? Hearing none, those minutes will stand approved as written. Um, next, we'll move to new business, uh, two special use permit requests today. The first is application 23032 by Matt Taylor of SEC on behalf of Brenda Jarman. They're requesting a special use permit to expand an institutional group assembly use, uh, in this case, Providence Christian Academy, to incorporate an existing building into the school campus. Uh, and this is for property located in the single family residential RS15 district at 378 DeJarnett Lane. Uh, Mr. Barbie, if you'd review that application for us. Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Young and members of the Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals. The request before you today is by uh, Mr. Matt Taylor with SEC on behalf of his clients, Providence Christian Academy. Uh, they're requesting an amendment to their special use permit uh, that would allow them to expand onto the adjacent property to the west uh, that you can see here on the map. This is a, currently a single family dwelling um, that has uh, recently become an, an opportunity for them. Um, their plan is to expand the campus to encompass this property, convert the rooms into some office space and, and a couple meeting areas, um, as well as removing the existing driveway here and relocating it to this side of the property that would move it away from their neighbors to the west, uh, help provide them a little more privacy and um, privacy and, and screening. Uh, they'll also add additional parking to the rear of the site in this location, as well as adding a type C buffer along this property line to again enhance the screening and, and privacy for their neighboring property. Um, this is a use uh, that's permitted in the district uh, only with the issuance of the special use permit. Um, school has been uh, at this location, I believe, since 20, I think since, well, it's been there for several, several years. Um, they currently have done a, a great job of maintaining the property and have been good neighbors. Um, as far as we're aware of, the review of the application went well. They appear to be meeting all the additional standards and standards of general applicability. Um, if you should so choose to approve uh, this application, we do recommend the following conditions of approval. Um, that the site should be submitted to the planning department for review and approval prior to the issuance of a building permit. The site plan submittal should be substantially consistent with the concept site plan submitted to the BZA and shall include civil plans, landscape plan, photometric lighting plan, and building elevations, and any other plan necessary to demonstrate compliance with the zoning ordinance and design guidelines. A final plat must be submitted that will combine the existing Providence Christian Academy parcel with the, addition, parcel with the additional parcel and said plat must be recorded prior to the issuance of any building permits. And then finally, a type C buffer shall be planted along the western property line of the subject property. Um, the applicant's representative is in attendance here, Mr. Taylor. Um, do you have a presentation? <coughs> so happy to answer any questions that you may have, and Mr. Taylor is also available if you should have anything that he needs to provide. Thank you, Mr. Barbie. Any questions for? staff at this point or Mr. Taylor all right uh, 
Hearing none, we'll now go to the public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you've come forward, and give us your name and address. And provide us any comments you may have as to the Providence Christian Academy application. Uh, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the floor for any further discussion or a motion. I would uh, move to approve this application. Uh, it would appear to me that it's in compliance with all of the uh, variance requirements as, with regard to its location. It's not uh, affecting, uh, changing any character. It's, it's actually gonna be contributing to the current use uh, of the uh, property, and I would move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Are none, so that application's been approved. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll move to application Z23030 by Ms. Angela Range, who's requesting a special use permit to establish a home occupation, in this case a hair salon, on property in the residential single family RS15 district located at 1303 Halifax Court. Uh, Mr. Aguilera, if you'd review this application for us. Yes, thank you, Chair Young. Let me pull up the agenda real quick um, so we can all follow along and the general public may also be able to view the associated documents that I will be referencing. I've been asked to interrupt for just a moment. On the previous item, um, request is for an amendment to the motion to, for it to be uh, subject to approval, subject to staff comments. Uh, so the subject to staff comments was left off. So we just want that for clarification for the record. I, okay, absolutely. I, without objection, that I would move that that is also subject to staff comments. You all in favor? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, a second. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Uh, as stated, our second item for this agenda this afternoon is a special use permit application uh, for a home-based business uh, for a one-share hair salon at 1303 Halifax Court. This is located in the Scotland Acres subdivision. Uh, the property owner, Ms. Angela Range, is requesting a special use permit um, to operate this hair salon um, as uh, required uh, per the Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance um, if, a special, uh, if a proposed home-based business, home occupation is to be generating traffic, they are required uh, to uh, get a special use permit, uh, special use permit uh, from the Board of Zoning Appeals pursuant to Section 9. Um, this property is zoned RS-15, so again, is a special use in this district. The property is a corner lot um, let me go back to the aerial view of it this is a property that is a corner lot and has two fronts one along Halifax Court and one along Glasgow Drive as you can see in this image here the, the property does have two driveways again one along Halifax Court and the other one along Glasgow Drive in our staff report, staff has provided a summary uh, for the general public as well as for you to review the proposed use and the proposed infor uh, the information regarding the, the home occupation. And per the applicant's written summary, the applicant will remodel a small room that is currently used as a laundry office room um, for the proposed home-based business. The proposed hair salon, again, will be a one-chair um, business and there will be no employees besides Ms. Range herself. The hours of operation will be from Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., and will be from Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The business will, again, operate by appointment only one client at a time on the property, and clients will be required to park on the driveway and not on the street. The applicant proposes to have no more than six clients per day, and the applicants, uh, the appointments will be scheduled that there will be uh, will be uh, scheduled in a way to ensure that there'll be no overlapping in between uh, clients' arrivals and customers' times for their appointment. The applicant has stated that the front driveway along Halifax, uh, Halifax Court will be used by the, the clients, and again, that there will be no parking on the street. And when I talk about the driveway here, it's a little difficult, but you can see it right here. 
it's this driveway right here that will be for the clients to park in for this proposed use. I'm going to scroll down and discuss further um, regarding the exterior um, for the uh, next portion of the proposed use. Um, the applicant has stated um, that with this proposed use, uh, it will be occupying 340 square feet, um, approximately 12% of the floor of the home floor area. Um, the overall total square footage of the home is approximately 4,204 square feet. So again, it will be only utilizing 12 12% 12 of that floor that home floor area. The applicant understands that if there is any type of interior work, um, any type of work regarding um, a plumbing or electrical, they are required to get uh, a building permit application to obtain the necessary permits and complete the uh, and complete the necessary inspections with that. The applicant has been active in discussing with building and codes to see what type of permits may be required. They are proposing to do some minor um, plumbing work that uh, may require a permit and as such they will again be required to get a plumbing permit and complete the, and pass the required uh, inspections. Uh, as stated in the application, there are no exterior structural modifications being proposed with this use. The only type of exterior component that is being proposed, again, the only exterior component is an attached business sign that will be, uh, that will be located on this side entrance door here. As you can see, the side entrance door, an attached business sign that will not exceed the maximum three square, uh, squ three square feet that is allowed by the zoning ordinance. Um, this is an example right here of the proposed business sign that will again be uh, in attached in the exterior of the home. And again, these are the locations here and here as to where the applicant is proposing to include that attached business sign. Again, there are no exterior modifications being proposed for this. This is an existing door, and as such, the applicant will use this for the client's arrival. Staff wanted to also provide an analysis uh, with this staff report. There was a number of correspondents that were coming in um, from the general public asking questions about process and everything. So we just kind of wanted to include this paragraph to provide a brief explanation as to what a special use permit is, what the special use uh, process is. Uh, special use, the purpose of a special use permit and this special use permit process is to allow for the review of a use in a zoning district by, the, by which its nature and use potential intensity of impact of the area is not a use allowed by right. Um, a special use permit may be approved with special conditions uh, to minimize any adverse impacts uh, and to ensure compatibility with the area. And thus, again, this is why we have the special use uh, permit process, this public hearing process, because to have the BZA review and ensure that if there's going to be any types of uh, effects that those are minimized and that the applicant can demonstrate that um, this use, this proposed use in this zoning district. Um, staff has reviewed the application for compliance of the, sta the standards of general applicability as well as the additional standards and believes that the applicant has met the minimum standards and is consistent with previously approved home occupation requests. Uh, per the Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance and the, and the BZA's further review of this application, we, staff did want to state that should the BZA find further uh, specific elements in its review that they determine to be impactful, that you determine to be impactful, the BZA may impose specific conditions uh, to mitigate any potential impacts. As required by the Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance, standards of general applicability, the applicant must present evidence um, uh, for the special use permits to establish their compliance with the standards and uh, information on those standards from the relevant zoning ordinance sections. The applicant has provided information and those materials are included in your agenda packet regarding the details and materials uh, and or equipment that they will be using uh, that is associated with this proposed use. And again, you can see that here, um, they have provided a business summary of the total equipment and um, uh, accessories they will be using. The relevant zoning ordinance sections that are applicable to this section that staff uh, uh, used uh, that are included in your staff report um, that the applicant must address are the standards of general applicability, section nine, subsection C, and the additional standards set forth for home occupations, uh, section nine, subsection D, two RR. And again, as stated, the, uh, the applicant has provided that information that is in, included with the procedure form that is in your agenda packet. In response to the provided app, uh, information from the applicant, staff has provided an analysis with each type of with each criteria for the general standards of applicability and the additional standards. 
and has determined that the applicant is compliant with those uh, minimum standards for general standards of applicability and as well as the additional standards for home occupation. I will uh, now go through uh, just briefly the standards of it so the general public uh, may follow along and so we can again determine the criteria for it. At first standard number one, staff has reviewed this application um, and the associated document and believe that uh, for standard number one, this criteria has been met. They are compliant with this standard. The salon will be operated inside the residence and the customers will only be parking on the existing driveway, the front driveway along Halifax Court and again, not in the right of way. Again, with no building uh, exterior improvements being made, um, the, um, the only type of exterior component that is being proposed is the installation of a, of a business sign. No noise will be generated from this application, um, from staff's review of this, of the associated documents, and there will only, again, be one customer at the residence. For standard number two, staff believes that the, that the applicant in this application is complying with that standard. The existing, uh, the existing uh, home for the proposed home-based business will remain as a residence for the property owner and no new structures, detached structures, accessory structures are being proposed with this application. Again, no new structures are being proposed or needed. The driveway can accommodate four, four or more vehicles. As shown from the aerial view, there are two existing driveways. The one along Halifax Court will be the one devoted to, uh, dedicated for the customers, but there is a secondary driveway that is available for that. But again, uh, we do not anticipate the, that type of traffic to be generated here with it. And again, the front driveway along Halifax Court will be sufficient. Customers will only, again, I'll be allowed to be uh, uh, on site by a prior appointment only within the, within the time frame that is specified with the special use permit. And customers will, again, will not be allowed uh, on site um, outside of those operating hours. And so again, we believe that uh, the applicant is compliant with standard number two. For standard number three, uh, staff has uh, determined that this proposed use is compliant with this standard as well. Uh, for the property, there already are existing services, utility services and everything, and there are no proposed improvements or modifications um, being made with this request. And so we have determined that the uh, existing service, there will be no type of uh, impact to these existing services. For standard number four, during staff's review of this application, we have found uh, no type of historic uh, scenic or natural features and significant features on this property uh, or that are being impacted by this proposed use. And so we believe uh, for standard number four that the applicant is complying with that standard. For standard number five, the applicant has provided information as well on how they intend to comply with those additional standards. And again, we'll um, uh, comply with the additional standards that are listed below. For the additional standards for a home occupation, um, as outlined in subsection D to RR, the applicant has confirmed that again, there will be no other employees besides themselves, Ms. Angela Range, operating this one chair um, home-based business. Um, as stated previously, there will be no exterior modifications being proposed. The applicant will install a business sign that will not exceed the maximum three square feet that is permitted from the, uh, for the Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance. Um, from the attached floor plan, the applicant has demonstrated that the proposed use, again, will only occupy 346 square feet out of the total 4,204 square feet. And so they will be in compliance with the uh, no more than 25% uh, maximum area being devoted to a home-based business in a dwelling unit so they will be compliant with that as well the proposed hair salon will only be using common household appliances and common uh, stylist accessories um, that has been provided in the business summary as well for your viewing um, these include a shampoo bowl stylist chair um, and other types of salon um, beauty uh, beauty accessories that will be used for this and staff's review of those uh, those elements we believe that there will never be no noise generated from those types of appliances or those types of accessories the applicant has confirmed in addition to that, that there'll be a store, there'll be no outside storage of goods or materials that are associated with the proposed use. Um, they will ensure that anything that, um, that is for that, again, will be kept inside, inside the main um, primary residence. And again, that there will be no additional parking um, on the public right of way. Per the applicant's letter, no group instruction uh, no group instruction is proposed with this. Um, the, and the associated land uses um, with standard number nine, uh, the associated uh, prohibited land uses and activities that are prohibited in section standard nine uh, will not be applicable to this uh, as well. They will not be applicable to this uh, proposed use. Um, for standard number 10, of course, 
um, the applicant is aware that uh, if there are any other additional standards that are imposed by the BZA that they will comply with them as well and um, have also understood that the special use permit will cease upon the transfer of property. So if the property were to sell or transfer to a different owner, the special use permit um, would be, would be uh, ceased after that. Throughout this process, um, the applicant has revised her original hours of operation. We can see that in the staff comments. During originally um, for this, the applicant's original request was to allow customers to arrive by 7 a.m. and to uh, be uh, enclosed no later than uh, 10 p.m. Staff has recommended for the special use permit approval, um, for the special use permit application, that the first customer arrive no later than seven, uh, no later than 8 a.m. and be closed no later than uh, 7 p.m. Um, the purpose for this was to just to be consistent with previously approved home occupations that the Board of Zoning Appeals has approved. Um, in our review of that, we found that this was, again, a consistent time frame and operating hours and to help minimize any potential conflicts um, with this use to uh, mitigate any, uh, any, mitigate any potential uh, impacts. In summary, because the proposed home-based business to operate a one-chair hair salon meets the standards of general applicability, as well as the additional standards for a home occupation, um, staff is recommending approval of the special use permit subject to the following conditions of approval. Um, these are listed uh, here as well. And um, you can see the one that we wanted to highlight again um, are the ones that customer visits shall be by appointment only. There'll be one, no more than one customer at a time for the home-based business. The, our uh, standard uh, condition of approval regarding signage, <coughs> the specific operating hours for this proposed use, as well as our uh, condition of approval regarding parking uh, for this proposed use to ensure that there will be no parking in the street and in the public right away and for it to all be contained on site. Um, wanted to also acknowledge beyond this, um, that wraps up my presentation. Um, we did receive, wanted to acknowledge that we did receive a number of correspondence um, from the general public on this use and we have included them um, because of the number that was sent, we have included them here for your review. Those are in your agenda packet for your review. Um, should you want to read them further that talk about um, their, uh, their concerns or any types of information that you may have. I am here for any questions. If you have any, Ms. Range as well is here in the audience. Um, and so if you have any questions for her, she is available. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Joel at this point? Uh, yes, sir. I have one question either for staff or for the attorney, uh, our staff attorney. Uh, with this protect of, of uh, homeowners association, are there any covenants or did you all look at covenants within the homeowners association that would prohibit this specifically to have a home-based uh, occupation? We did do some research on that. Um, it appears that, that there are some restrictive covenants for this neighborhood. Um, this property is located in Scotland Acres Section 2. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the BZA's jurisdiction with special use permits, uh, there, are, there are certain limits uh, that, are, that are placed. Um, essentially, you have to look at the standards that are provided in the zoning ordinance and determine for a special use permit, does the application meet uh, both the standards of general applicability and the additional standards for home-based businesses uh, in order to determine if, if the special use permit should be um, issued. Um, I've got some, some cases that I can go into detail right now about or we can go into detail after the public hearing about it. Um, but I will uh, give, I guess, as, as the thesis statement that um, restrictive covenants and the zoning ordinance operate in two different areas of jurisdiction. Uh, one doesn't necessarily overrule the other, uh, but they, they deal with, with two different things. The special use permit deals with compliance with the zoning conditions. And if the zoning conditions are met, then the permit should issue. Restrictive covenants are private in nature between uh, the neighbors and, and property owners within the subdivision and their enforcement for that is through a court of law or equity which this body is not. Okay. Um, and like you. I said I, I do have one case that specifically speaks to that that says specifically that um, 
just because a special permit is issued or a special use permit, I, the case actually calls it a special exception, which is what the state law uses. But just because a special exception or special use permit is issued does not negate or release any uh, private restrictive covenants. So like I said, they, they operate in, in two different fields. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any further questions for, for staff? Um, I know the zoning ordinance doesn't, it doesn't deal with hours of operation, but this seems a heavier request as far as hours of operation that we've seen before. Do you, am I correct in remembering? So, Chair Young, we did do some research again. Um, obviously, with these types of questions, we did want to be proactive in finding out and providing that information for you to all make a sound decision. Um, we did find from the applications in 2023, um, the uh, maximum hours was 7 p.m. of the two ones that you have approved this year. The no later, it was no later than 7 p.m. Of course, in 2022, they again, it ranges from that 7 p.m., 6 p.m., but they range around the closing time of that and 8 a.m., usually within that time frame. They definitely go a little bit uh, they have not always been at, uh, consistent across the board, but they have stopped at a certain time, usually 6 p.m., 7 p.m., or they start in the morning at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., but nothing no later than, nothing no earlier than 8 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions for staff? Uh, Ms. Range, anything you'd like to add to the application? Feel free to, feel free to come to the podium there and provide us any comments you may have. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Um, my name is Angela Range and my address is 1303 Halifax Court. I'd like to thank the board for your time and consideration regarding my home occupancy permit application. So after reading all the emails from our neighborhood, I found that safety was the number one concern, which made me equally as concerned. And I had to pause to consider, you know, is this true? I specialize in women's hair. I will be booking by appointment only with people I'm comfortable entering into my home. And I would not want to compromise mine or anybody else's safety. So I questioned and considered, do I need to withdraw this application? And so I decided to look into this further with professionals that would have the expertise to speak on this matter. I spoke with the Murfreesboro Police Department, Rutherford County EMS, City of Murphy Furrow Fire and Rescue Department, and I was relieved to learn that each of their professional opinions were congruent in determining that my business plan would not pose any threats to our neighborhood, emergency vehicles would not be impeded as my one client at a time would be in a driveway, that our neighborhood is on a public roadway which anyone can travel at any time as often as they choose, that it would be no different than other visitors coming to visit any home in the neighborhood, delivery drivers, repairmen, lawn care, leaving and returning to your home several different times during the day. I verified with the police officer that they have had zero criminal complaints in regard to the many in-home hair occupations that currently exist in our community, and they have only received calls from neighbors concerned if the business was operating legally or illegally. And once they verified it was operating legally, it became a civil matter. Um, so I was also pleasantly surprised to hear that since my clients will be pre-screened via a virtual consultation or have a prior relationship with myself, that the additional people brought in by my business, instead of being viewed as alarming or posing a threat, that it was in fact viewed opposite and then instead would give additional eyes to look out for suspicious activity to help keep our neighborhood safe. I also have cameras installed on my property as an extra measure of safety. I also wanted to note I do not have an active HOA on my property, um, but I am just learning of uh, these restrictions that I was never told about by the prior homeowners. Um, my sign was another concern. So, um, you know, if approved and, and, I, and I do go forward with opening the business, this is just the first step, there's several steps. Um, my sign will be tasteful in nature and it's not gonna appear commercial whatsoever. It'll be 24 inches long by seven inches high. It's not very big. It's gonna be similar to that of like a welcome sign. Um, I must hang a sign to be in compliance with the Tennessee State Board requirements. 
Um, this information is located on the Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance website in an article titled Important Information for Shop Applicants. It is located on page six. Under residential shops, it states, all shops, including ones located in a private residence, shall display a sign of sufficient size to be clearly visible from the street, indicating that it is a shop. The next concern was regarding property value. I was unable to find any information to support that having an in-home business could negatively affect property value, as I too wanted to know. <laughs> I've made a significant, or we, my family, we've made a significant financial investment to live in our neighborhood as well. But what I did learn um, is that such things um, like real estate market changes, unkept lawns, junkyard appearances, foreclosures, abandoned homes, loud neighbors, proximity to sex offenders, railroads, interstate, homeless shelters, landfills, things of that nature are what are stated to have a negative impact on property values. And then another concern was fear of additional businesses in the neighborhood. And I believe this may be due to a lack of um, you know, knowledge among the neighbors because there's already several home businesses established in our neighborhood, um, so early, some as early as 1998. Um, there are two on Glasgow, two on Windsor, one on Scotland, and five on Whitehall. In addition to these already established home-based businesses, there's also an Airbnb um, and possibly a fraternity house that I'm not positive on. Um, lastly, the residential character of our neighborhood will be maintained as I'm not making any modifications to the exterior of my home and if approved will remain zoned residential. It will not be zoned commercial and I think it's important to state that. Uh, I've worked really hard with the city to ensure my plans are consistent with prior approvals for these in-home salons that currently exist in our community. I've provided all the necessary docu documentation requested of me. I've done my best to take steps and address concerns with our neighborhood. Um, you know, part of the reason we purchased this home was to be able to work from home because it best fits my family's needs. You know, I hope, I hope my neighbors can appreciate me trying to introduce myself. I handed out my phone number. I asked them to contact me with any concerns prior to this meeting, you know, whether they chose to do so or not. I hope they can also appreciate my character to pursue legal avenues to work from home and not just run an in-home business illegally. I ask the board to base their determination based on substantial evidence, particular to the home occupancy permit requirements, and not to be based on generalized community objections. Thank you again for your time and consideration. Thank you. Hmm? Any questions for Ms. Range? Thank you. Uh, I guess now we'll move to the uh, to the public hearing. Um, anyone wishing to speak can come forward and provide us your comments. Um, I'm sure those some questions will arise, and will uh, after the public hearing, we'll let staff and staff attorney help guide us through those questions. Um, but feel free to give us your name and address and provide us any comments you may have. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and fellow board members. Uh, my name is Roy Thompson. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. I live at 2102 Windsor Street, which is directly north of the property in question, and I also own the vacant lot directly east to the property. So as you've been told, it's bordered up by two streets, and the two properties that are adjacent to it are both mine. So I have a deep and personal interest in keeping this neighborhood strictly residential. I moved into Scotland Acres in 1988. Over the last 35 years, I've raised my children, and now I'm watching younger parents raise their children. Um, years ago, there were times when my kids were in the yard doing something they shouldn't be, and a neighbor pulled up and reprimanded them and called me and told me they did. I appreciated that. When the kids were older, they blocked off part of the street with orange caution cones and played street hockey on their rollerblades. If a neighbor drove down the street and saw that, they'd just turn around and go around the block get to their house another way. Uh, this is the kind of neighborhood we have. Uh, it's this kind of neighborhood I want to preserve. Every day there are still uh, bikers, there are a lot of walkers, there are couples walking in the evening in the dark, uh, people walking their babies and walking their pets. Uh, this is the atmosphere that will be compromised by a commercial business and the additional traffic of strangers that come with a commercial enterprise. Scotland Acres predates the time of homeowner associations, and as you have uh, mentioned, um, Mr. Tipsett, we have 
restrictive covenants. Our number one in our restrictive covenant says no lot shall be used except for residential purposes. It doesn't say primarily, it says definitively, no lot shall be used except for residential purposes. The house at 1303 Halifax is also at the only four-way intersection. So this is the neighborhood. The red green star is where it's located. These are my properties. We have a couple of places where there th three roads come together or there's a, an intersection, but this is the only four-way intersection in the neighborhood. Each of these red dots represents someone that has signed a petition opposed to this within the neighborhood. When we have that, those petitions available for this board if you choose to look at them with names, addresses, and signatures on them. Um, for your reference, this is the MTSU campus. Over here is Reeves Rogers School. Uh, it's bordered by Rutherford Boulevard and the neighborhood does not connect to the north. So the only traffic coming in, the ingress and egress to Miss uh, Range's property is right down Glasgow. People coming into this neighborhood come into this neighborhood. They're not coming through this neighborhood. Recently, I invited Mayor McFarland to the Murfreesboro Noon Rotary Club to speak. As he was talking, he spoke about the growth that we're experiencing in Murfreesboro. And one of the things he said is that we know we're going to have growth, but we want that growth to be intentional and controlled. Um, I don't think that this is the type of growth that our city leaders think of when they use the words intentional. Uh, in recent emails with the mayor, he specifically stated, and I quote, please share with all the neighbors, I am not supportive of these types of uses in residential areas. Approval of this variance or special use permit will increase traffic in our area. And so if approved, I con am concerned it sets the precedence that the next request can't be approved can't be denied. I'm a dentist and I'm retired. What keeps me from asking for a one chair operatory in my garage? And how would you deny that? Or could you deny it? Now, maybe I've made Scotland Acres sound like a bit idyllic. And generally, it is. It's boarded, as I said, by MTSU on one side, Rutherford Boulevard on one side, Reeve Rogers School. It's not likely we're gonna have a strip mall in our neighborhood or adjacent to it. But it's a neighborhood that we want to continue to have just as we won't have it now. It's a neighborhood that if you or your parents or grandparents lived in, would be standing right here where I am asking for the same thing. And that is that I implore each of you, each and every one of you to do what may be difficult, but I know is the right thing and it's to vote to deny this special use permit. Uh, Mr. Chairman and board members, thank you for your time and attention to my comments. Mr. Chairman, members, my name is Catherine Bond. I'm a homeowner, I'm a resident owner at 1015 Glasgow Drive and I'm here to speak in opposition to granting the special use permit at 1303 Halifax. My husband and I moved to our home 13 years ago, and one of the things we looked for specifically, as I am legally blind, is a safe and quiet neighborhood. I'm not the only disabled member in our community. There's a very nice gentleman two doors down from me that uses a electric mobile wheelchair scooter. And we are both ones of the many walker, dog walker, generally walker community that walk morning or evening in our neighborhood. Our network of streets, Campbell, Halifax Court, Glasgow Drive, Whitehall, have no sidewalks. Not complaining, just saying they all have no sidewalks. So everybody, and we are a friendly, nice community, we all walk in the streets because 
that's what we've got. So we all walk our dogs and visit each other and walk in the streets. And that intersection at Glasgow and Halifax is a place where people congregate. So I'm just saying we all walk in the streets and we're a big friendly community. And there's two people with disabilities right in that first block. And that first block from Greenland into Glasgow is the egress block where anybody coming to this new business would come in. We like our quiet, commercial free community and we all congregate and walk in the streets. So please consider that we don't want it changed. My second point, again, I've just reiterated this thing, is we did check our bylaws when we first moved and we chose a place specifically that had an HOA bylaws that said there would be no commercial businesses. We looked for that. My husband enjoys the community. He walks to MTSU every day. He enjoys walking safely home at night. Tonight he's coming home very late after being at MTSU until 10 or 11. He walks early morning, he walks in the rain, he walks in the sun, he walks to work every day. It's a wonderful safe community. And we really enjoy it being just the way it is. And we really would not like to open the door to the beginning of commercial enterprises. Now you may have heard that there are other home businesses in the area. Well. <laughs> I don't really think that's the case. There's people like my husband who grade papers from home. It's not really a home business. There are no other commercial businesses in our community. This would be the first, and we don't want it to be the beginning of a change we don't want. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sean Gilliland. My wife, Ann, and I reside at 1011 Whitehall Road. Uh, Whitehall Road is, Halifax is sort of an extension of Whitehall, and so we're, we're on that street. Um, I have a little bit of a different take. A few, several years ago, I had the opportunity to serve on the Manny Avenue Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee. I was a resident of the downtown area. I was asked to serve on that committee, and we looked at uh, an overlay district proposed uh, by the city for the, the downtown area of North and South Manny Avenue. And uh, as part of that, I learned an awful lot about planning uses and, and overlay zones and that sort of thing. And we got to travel to Nashville and meet with some individuals from Metro and learned about the, uh, how proposed uses uh, that are outside the norm can actually improve a neighborhood and offer sort of uh, benefits for revitalization. Uh, and, it, and it really opened my eyes to that concept, but there were three things that I, I learned from that experience. One, that these types of overlay zones were particularly good for core downtown business areas that, that, um, that, that met that framework of a neighborhood, and I'm not sure that Scotland Acres falls into that category. But the other thing I learned was that those can only really work with a strong system of checks and balances to make sure that the the plans are in place so that that type of, of use doesn't impact the neighborhood in a negative way. And uh, in Metro, they had all sorts of, of processes to make that happen. Uh, it was disappointing that our city didn't adopt uh, the Manny Avenue comprehensive plan at the time. And, and I think a lot of that was from concern from people who, uh, who were opposed to, even though it would open up the uses, it would also put a magnifying glass on those uses to say that we're gonna make sure that you do this, that, and the other. Uh, in the end, I, I think that there is some advantage of that in certain areas of our town to, to open up to multiple uses. However, my wife and I wrote a letter in opposition to this request, and the reason was that um, it doesn't appear that we have either the infrastructure or the resources or the will to really make sure that these things are enforced. There have been some other uses in our street, and we live roughly across the street from the alleged uh, fraternity house. And um, I think it's, it seems to be a, a good example of sometimes that it's difficult for the city to enforce regulations and zones and ordinances that we have on the books. And, and our concern is that if such a, a, an application were approved, what is then to prevent um, the, the applicant from doing things that weren't part of those rules, from expanding the number of chairs, from expanding the hours of operation, from putting up a bigger sign. 
And until we see that the city is really capable of, of enforcing these rules and cracking down and making sure that people are abiding by those, uh, we just don't support any kind of expansion of, of, of that in our neighborhood. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman and Board. Uh, I'm Jimmy Fox. I live at uh, 1118 Glasgow Drive. Uh, my wife and I, Shannon, we built our house and completed it in December of 99. So we've been there about uh, 20, 24 years. Uh, I'm also the president of the Scotland Chase Homeowners Association. Uh, our covenant state that homes shall be used for the purpose of a single family dwelling. Uh, one of our main concerns, if a retail business is opened in our neighborhood, it will set a precedent for other retail businesses to be established in Scotland Chase and Scotland Acres. You know, other businesses, you know, such as car washing and detailing, retail cosmetics, uh, sporting goods, you know, the list can go on. Um, I know that it was mentioned that maybe some other businesses, you know, were, were in the neighborhood. I know when I established my LLC, and my agency for my business in Franklin, I established that on Glasgow Drive <clears throat> because that's where I filed my taxes. But I did business in Cool Springs. So that happens, you know, from time to time. Um, you know, we do have other concerns. We've addressed, you know, increased traffic, potential decline in, you know, property values. Um, you know, and other homeowners in Scotland Chase and Scotland Acres you know, seeing a business, you know, come in, they may have the idea, well, why, why can't I start a business in the neighborhood? It's already been passed once, so, you know, why not me as well? And then also, you know, policing uh, the traffic in the neighborhood or policing the traffic, you know, in the retail establishment. You know, that means that if I'm the president, neighbors call me, and then I have to be maybe the authority having jurisdiction to say, there's too many people in your salon. Do I have to ask people to leave? I, I really don't think that I want to take on that burden in the neighborhood, but I'll be asked to, I know that. <laughs> Cause I am now, but anyway. <clears throat> you, know, you know, if my neighbors and I, if we wanted, you know, a retail business, then we would probably move to a downtown area. And I believe y'all would too. Thank you. Well, I'll go, Mr. Chairman. Sumner Bolden, my residence is 617 East Lytle, but I do own a house at 1911 Windsor Street, which is also the house that I grew up in. We moved there in 1969. Um, and coincidentally enough, or maybe not so much coincidental, my father in a fit of peak one time when we were kids, dubbed the, the wing that we lived in the fraternity house, and for good reason. Uh, so I understand. The, the thing that I noticed uh, uh, in staff comments in particular was, was with respect to the general uh, requirements, not the specific requirements for home occupation, the, the zoning ordinance itself says that it shall not have any substantial or undue adverse effect upon the adjacent property, the character of the neighborhood, et cetera. The comment then says that the proposed expansion uh, shouldn't have a, any substantial adverse effect on the adjacent property or neighborhood. That's not what the ordinance says. It is incumbent upon the applicant to, to uh, affirmatively show that the character of the neighborhood will not be impacted. And, and I think the import of everybody that's gotten up here so far is to that very point. It does impact the character of the neighborhood. And that's why these people live in that neighborhood. And I don't now, but I sure I've been. I was there a long time, uh, and I know a lot of these folks, and a lot of them are second-generation owners in Scotland Acres, and they go back there for the reasons that you've heard these people talk about. 
It's a wonderful neighborhood. It's a great place to, to raise your kids. And that is the quote unquote character of the neighborhood. And to, to uh, allow home occupations, particularly this kind, which is, which I don't know if you call it this, but I would call it uh, sort of retail-y in the sense that there are people coming to the home for, for whatever reason is, is completely inimical to, to the, the subdivision itself. And so I, I think that the applicant has <coughs> not shown that there won't be an adverse impact. And I reiterate, it's not a, upon the, the, the opposition to show that it, that it will. It, the applicant must show that it won't. And so with all due respect to the, to the staff comments, that just hadn't happened. And so we request that you deny this application. not plan to come up here. I'm Dick and Kidbold. <laughs> and uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and uh, you okay? <laughs> All right. Um, Barbara and I uh, bought a lot over 40 years ago, and I submit I am the oldest resident in this whole Scotland Acres. And so we've been there quite a while, and it's always been a good, restful neighborhood. Uh, when we bought that property as a practicing lawyer at that time, I made sure that we had restrictions. And they've all been here, and I'm not going to echo everything they've said. But the uh, tranquility of a neighborhood and the uh, is something we want to preserve. And we also want to have a stability of property value. So those are things that are in our minds. They may not be exactly right, but they're there. We also don't know what kind of advertising may be done by these folks or anybody else. Maybe they'll sell the business, and then we'll have something else to go through. But I don't want to see flyers around about a business. I don't want to see an ad in the paper, whether it's one inch or a whole page. I don't want to be driving along my car and hear my radio say, I can get my hair fixed in Scotland Acres. I don't have much to fix, but I don't want to have that. So lastly, and I'm not going to say much more, I would like to see all the people here raise their hands who are opposed to this variance. Thank you. Lastly, I submit, as far as planning for the city of Murfreesboro, I don't think this is a good idea. If a variance can be obtained in our uh, subdivision, it can be t obtained in others for things like this. I think we need to maintain our residential areas. It's been zoned like that. I hope you'll see fit to continue that way. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marguerite Thompson. I'm the other half of the Thompsons. I represent our property at 1305 Halifax, just so we can be legit. Um, one thing, oh, I see, I need my phone. Um, I do disagree with one statement Ms. Mrs. Range made. Uh, I have an email from staff member uh, Carolyn Jaco, and I'd like to read it to you because I asked her about special use permits that are active in our neighborhood at this time. And so good afternoon, after receiving a public records request from me regarding approvals for special use permits in Scotland Acres, I did not locate any for this subdivision. The search included Hanover, Raleigh, Scotland, Whitehall, Glasgow, Windsor, Halifax, and Campbell. So this would be the first one in our neighborhood that you would be voting on today. I just want to clear that up for the records. The other thing about the neighborhood that is really special. I, had, I have a house that when people steal cars at MTSU, they drive them, park them in front of my house, 
walk down behind uh, where Mr. Halliburton lives, jump the fence, and their friend picks them up um, on the road, and they scoot. This has happened every year, usually at the start of the year. I'm sure the parents have said, lock your car. Every time you're a freshman driving an MTSU, they steal books, they resell them, and, and uh, computers. The police have instructed me how to do, I go out and take a picture of the car, license plate, usually in two hours later, the car is gone. But this is something about being vigilant. And I've had numerous cases where we've had strange people in my neighborhood. One time I backed out on my driveway and I stopped, I was looking down, um, going east from Windsor, and my neighbor, uh, Gretchen Johnson, called me and said, Mom Gray, are you watching that strange man that's walking down towards Dr. Campbell's house? I'm like, yes. And I said, he doesn't belong here, and you know, can you contact the police and let them come check it out? Because he was going up looking through windows in broad daylight in people's homes. He'd just come by, by mine when I was pulling out. It was one of the situations I had hair up the back, standing up at the back of my neck saying something's not right. Um, Dr. Thompson and I have a real estate company. We just have it for our own pro commercial properties. But out of respect to our neighbors, we don't operate it out of our home. We lease a piece of property at 510, 20, 520 Highland Terrace. That's where we conduct our business. And I just want to share that with you. And many people that have had business license before, if they go get a business license, for example, interior decorator, on the form they have to put a, a location down. Well, most of them put their home. And I believe that's where Ms. Range is getting her information from. So they're not conducting a business they may be using their telephone, but they're not having any traffic in and out of their house. Uh, I know my husband doesn't want to go back to practicing dentistry after 45 years in this community, but um, I'm a physical therapist, and what stops me from paying $350 next month and saying, I want to put a little treatment room. You know, I can have 600 square feet according to the 12% rule that was being presented today of how she uses. So I can see one patient at a time traffic, one, park, one person parked in my driveway, and, and just things just can go on and on. You will be approving everybody that could come up and say, why go to work any longer? Let me just do it out of my house. The last thing I want to say, talk about is human nature. We're not going to, we are human people, humans, we are attracted to other humans. We are not going to stop our socialization. I don't, if you, if you can do a research paper on that, you probably get printed in the New England uh, uh, Journal of Medicine. It is not going to stop. It is human nature that we connect with each other. We're interested in their health, their children, what, what behavior may be good or bad going on in our neighborhood. It is an interested neighborhood. We have one, two ways in and no way out, basically. I know every car that goes by my house, and I'm looking to see what's going on. Not to be a snoopy neighbor like that, but I'm interested in what cars are going by my neighborhood. I appreciate your time today and for listening to us. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Wakefield. My wife and I live at 1202 Scotland Drive. And while I'm up here, thank you guys for the dip right there in front of our house. That is entertainment. People come flying through there. Anyway, <clears throat> my wife and I uh, have been in our home since 2008. Uh, we have always loved the Scotland Acres neighborhood even before we lived there. It's just been that warm, cozy, inviting neighborhood that uh, kind of reminds you to leave it to Beaver. And we, we are opposed to this request. A lot of my neighbors have mentioned traffic. And one of the things, though, in that traffic that has been omitted, you know, a lot of people are trying to avoid traffic at Reeves Rogers and MTSU. And so they are using, they're using Glasgow, they're using Scotland, they're using all of those routes around to avoid that. That will increase traffic and, and there's already enough traffic as is. But with the abundance of properties and 
spaces in Murfreesboro that are already zoned commercial, there's really not much need to open the door up in our neighborhood. The Rutherford Crossing Shopping Center where the Kroger is has got several vacant spaces that would be better suited than a residential area for this type of business. So again, thank you for your time and consideration. Mr. Chairman, uh, I understand that I'm in the minority here. Uh, my name is Marina Gregory, and I live at 1122 Glasgow Drive. Uh, we are not, as I guess, uh, uh, long residents. We've been here since 2018, five years. And we love our neighborhood. And I'm, I'm Angela na uh, Angela's neighbor, and I'm here to support her application. Um, Angela has assured me that she would follow all zoning rules. So there won't be any issues such as increased traffic or any disruptions to our peaceful neighborhood life. Uh, plus, her business, business might make life easier for many residents who won't have to travel for hair appointments, reducing uh, city traffic. Um, and I know it, it's been mentioned that uh, there are a fraternity house potentially in our neighborhood. I also know of at least two Airbnb um, residences that are used as Airbnb, and there's constantly different cars parked from different states on the street uh, almost daily. Um, I don't believe that Angela's quiet business will have any significant impact on, the, on our neighborhood life. Um, and not only will Angela's business benefit our community and help her, help her support her family, but it will also maintain the peace and quiet we all value. I'm excited to welcome Angela's business to our community and fully support um, her in, in this endeavor. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Shannon Fox. I live at 1118 Glasgow Drive and I'm here to oppose uh, the rezoning and basically I have the same sentiment that's been um, uh, presented here today but I just really want the um, committee to think long term because again we talk about Murfreesboro growing all the time and what I want to reiterate is we just don't want un, un um, you know the long-term like consequences that we can't foresee right now if we open this up again it sets a precedent so it's the unintended consequences that we're worried about um, and again nobody can tell us whether that's going to happen or not so again we're just not in favor of it it's not in the best interest of the neighborhood and we would appreciate your vote in opposing thank you Hi, my name is Caitlin Burns. I'm Angela's daughter, and I didn't plan on getting up here to speak today, but I have a lot of things that I want to say. Um, one thing is I know my mom, and I know she would never put me in danger. She's not going to have anyone in our house that would do that to the neighborhood. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people have concerns, but my mom also, she does my friend's hair for free. So whenever they come to our house to get their hair done and leave, like the neighbors, they don't even notice that. This is a business that wouldn't impact the neighbors how they think it would. And I also feel like the neighbors should have came and talked to my mom more about it, to know more about it than other neighbors around because they have the wrong impression of the business. Um, also, the, where the salon would be, there's a separate door. It's blocked off from our house. No one's gonna get in. I don't think that it would cause any safety problems. Um, one lady, I don't remember her name, came up here and said something about people dumping cars from MTSU. That's already something that is a problem that we can't help and there's gonna be things like that in a neighborhood that you can't help, but my mom's business wouldn't 
do anything like that. Um, I'm in nursing school at MTSU. I leave a lot to go to study groups. I have people come to the house for study groups and they know it's a neighborhood. My mom's gonna inform everyone that is a client that it's a neighborhood. Everyone knows how to drive in a neighborhood. The street is wide. There's room for people to walk with someone driving down it, regardless of a sidewalk being there or not. Um, also, I haven't lived at this home very long. I've lived there for a little bit over a month, but I have never seen anyone congregate around the stop signs right outside my house, and I live there. So that's another thing that I feel like um, I haven't personally seen, and maybe people do do that, but like I said, in a neighborhood, you know to watch out for people, and you know not to like hit someone with your car. Like You're going to be aware. Um, also, I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, I don't think that it's going to increase traffic, like I said before, and I just want to make one more statement about this. Um, it is one person at a time coming to our home, and then they will be leaving. That is one car coming in and out of the neighborhood at a time. I know my mom said up to six clients a day, but with the hours that she would be permitted, it would likely never get to that because it takes hours to do hair. Um, and I just feel like there's no difference of me leaving my house to go to Target and coming back or having a friend come over and leaving. Um, that's the same amount of traffic that it would increase in the neighborhood. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? My husband and I live on Windsor Street, and we've been there for almost 24 years. Get your name, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt you. Get your name, please. Janice Roselle. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Yes, and we live on Windsor Street and have been there almost 24 years. And we are a very welcoming neighborhood. We all take care of each other. If we notice something is not correct, if we notice a neighbor needs help, somebody needs a bowl of soup, somebody needs dinner taken to them, somebody needs a ride to the doctor, we do all of those things. And it's a different thing working from your home than having a business in your home. We welcome the whole neighborhood as far as our friends, our family. We walk dogs, we, we the children, grandchildren. But for us to have the extra commotion or possible commotion in the neighborhood is not what we're looking for. We are a peaceful, calm neighborhood. And when we bought there, we were looking for a quiet neighborhood that we could live the rest of our life in. But we don't want that extra commotion and the extra traffic. We already have enough traffic anyway with the MTSU. And we don't need a commercial business in the neighborhood. So we are opposed to it. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good afternoon. My name is Karen Clark. I live in 1006 Glasgow, which is the second house on the right as you enter from Greenland. So I am extremely aware of how much traffic we have right now. Uh, we moved here to, from downtown, which it was very very um, congested. We moved out to Glasgow, Scotland Acres, because of the tenor and character of the, of the neighborhood. And because I'm a bicyclist, and my husband is a bicyclist and a runner. And we certainly do um, enjoy our neighbors tremendously. And I'm more aware, I think, than a lot of people of how much traffic is already entering Glasgow from Greenland. Thank you. I'm against this proposal. I'm Sandra Wilcox, and I live on Raleigh Court. I think one of the things that bothers me that's not ha already been said and emphasized is, is the signage up on the house. I just can't imagine driving around Scotland Acres and seeing a business sign, tw 24 inches by, I've forgotten, six or seven 
uh, that just bothers me to think of a business sign in our yard. Anyone else wishing to speak? All right, if not, we'll now close the public hearing. And uh, I believe the uh, our city attorney and staff may want to address some additional items that may help clarify what this board can and can't do. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as a threshold matter, I want to uh, discuss a couple of comments that were made regarding uh, statements by city officials. Um, Unless those statements have been made directly by the city official or there's documentation in the record of those, those statements uh, are hearsay um, and those should be, you know, I guess considered accordingly uh, or not considered accordingly in the deliberations of the body. Um, getting on to more of the, the substance of this, this body's jurisdiction regarding special use permits, uh, I discussed a little bit earlier about the interplay or really the separation of um, the special use permit and restrictive covenants, um, but wanted to go in a little bit into detail as far as what it is that this board is approving and what this board can consider uh, in either approving or denying a special use permit. Um, I'll say Mr. Bolden was, uh, was correct in his uh, initial analysis of the standards of general applicability and then the additional standards. Um, it is the, the applicant's responsibility to first meet uh, all of the standards and conditions that are within the zoning ordinance. Um, but then if the board finds that those standards have been met, then it is the opposition's burden to try to overcome uh, any findings of those conditions. Um, but again, as a threshold matter, um, when you talk about what it is that the board uh, can and cannot consider, um, I'm reading this one out of Wilson County Youth Emergency Shelter versus Wilson County uh, for the attorneys in the audience who want that site. Um, the, uh, the court said in that case, um, it is not a function of the board to conduct a referendum on public attitudes relative to a position, petition. Uh, speculations, expressions of fears, and considerations of an aesthetic or political nature do not form a basis to support a de the decision made by an administrative body charged with adjudicatory responsibility. Um, the, board go the court goes on to say, uh, while the BZA has authority to act under the zoning regulations, it must act within existing standards and guidelines. Uh, so all of that to say is that the, the zoning ordinance, um, as approved by the city council, is what guides what authorizes and what limits your ability uh, to deliberate and consider the factors in this case. Uh, that means if it is, if it is one of the, the standard, the general or additional standards that's located within the zoning ordinance, it must be considered, it must be deliberated, and there must be a finding that it either has or has not been met. Um, conversely, if there is a matter or an item that is outside of the zoning ordinance, then it is not within this body's purview to consider that. Uh, as I stated earlier with restrictive covenants, nothing in the zoning ordinance um, or really in the restrictive covenants authorizes this body to render an interpretation of restrictive covenants or to render a decision about them. Uh, that, like I said, is left privately between the property owners and to the courts. Um, so, and there's, I've got another case site here that talks about considering those types of matters, if I can get to it. Yes, um, a board is without power to deny a special use permit on grounds not expressly stated in the zoning ordinance, and it must employ the, spe the specific statutory criteria which are relevant. Um, and again, this one comes out of the case of Demumbrian versus Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so again, to say that um, unless, unless there is a finding or a decision made by this board that one of, the, one of the findings within the zoning ordinance has or has not been met, um, then that act, there, there is a risk that 
um, an appellate court could find that, that the body's decision was arbitrary, uh, as well-intentioned as it may be. Um, that said, uh, I, I do want to tell the board that while, while you can't interpret or render a decision on the restrictive covenants, um, the, the standards of general applicability do refer to the character of the neighborhood and the adjacent properties. So I believe it is within the, the board's purview to, to consider testimony uh, regarding the, neighbor, the neighborhood and the character of the neighborhood and the fact, like I said, not the details, but the fact that it may contain restrictive covenants uh, in, in, its, in its determination of whether or not this, this use would be permitted. Um, there's also a site uh, in one of these cases to the effect that uh, special use permits are unlike variances in the sense that a variance is something that is not allowed under any circumstance within the, within the ordinance, but that there are unique factors that would justify relief from the ordinance. Special use permits um, are of a separate character in the sense that um, the Planning Commission and the City Council have already determined that, that these are uses that are appropriate in these zones if they meet certain standards and certain conditions. Uh, and those conditions are listed out. And that's, that's what you look at in the case of a special use permit. And that's why your deliberation may, be, may feel somewhat more limited in the, the context of a special use permit than it would in the, in the context of a variance. Um, and one other thing, I, I had printed it off in case you were curious like me. I'd always wondered where that sign thing for, for cosmetology and barbershops came out. It's actually in TCA 62-4-126, if y'all ever want to know that it's actually in the law. So um, if you have any other questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Like I said, I've got more, more case citations as far as what we can what we Is can. Is there discuss. anything that defines character of the neighborhood? Uh, there, there is not that that I have have found. Uh, there's not necessarily in our zoning ordinance, and I didn't research the cases to look at, at character of the neighborhood. Um, but I, I think when you're when you're considering that, um, it's best to uh, to consider and deliberate on the factual elements that have been provided uh, regarding what what may apply to that particular factor. Um, I, I do think you do have some, some level of discretion uh, with, within that uh, to determine you know, what, what that means in, in the particular context of, of special use permits and whether or not a particular special use will or will not adversely affect that. Before we go too much further with this, um, I just want to make the comment, as uh, Ms. Thompson mentioned, I live in this neighborhood. And so I'm going to abstain from voting or any part of the deliberation. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Halliburton. So with Mr. Tips's absence and Mr. Halliburton's uh, abstention, uh, we'll have a quorum of three uh, for the purpose of voting. So, and uh, I, I would also do, just like to remind the, the chairman that um, I think we're okay with our first vote because it was a unanimous vote and there were no, uh, there were no vocalizations of opposition, uh, but we would uh, uh, like to see roll call votes uh, okay. for, the, for the motions going forward. Okay. Um, I guess I'm with uh, along those same lines in the, uh, you know, the, uh, character of the neighborhood and that that's the piece that's that's kind of key to me i think miss range has gone to uh, done what the staff has asked as far as the property and uh signage and the, and the use of the of her, of her home there but uh, the character of the neighborhood and that change uh, and again while we're not enforcing the restrictive covenants uh, to me it speaks to the character of the neighborhood and what the neighbors wanted uh, in that neighborhood so um, I, I'm, I'm gonna have a tough time with this one based on based on that key piece there. Yeah, and if I if I could expand on that a little bit too, uh, looking at looking at the factor, um, and I, Ms. King, I don't know if this will help in in your personal analysis or not, but it talks about having a substantial and undue adverse impact, uh, which means it's it's not just a matter of inconvenience, it's not just a matter of, of unseemliness or unsightliness. 
uh, it is it is a character of of such an adverse neighbor uh, the the effect is of such an adverse nature uh, that it has a significant and substantial impact on the neighborhood and, and completely changes the face of the neighborhood. Am I remembering this right, that the ordinance includes a list of businesses that can receive special use permits? Is there, a, or there is, isn't there a list either of those who are, th those that cannot have special use permits or that can have special use permits somewhere in the ordinance? Yes, uh, in, in the ordinance we have a chart, we, it's referred to as chart one, uh, and it is, it's laid out in a grid style that shows, um, not, it's not an exhaustive list, but it shows nearly all of the you know, contemplated uses that you can have in the city. And then that grid, um, you can either have an X or an S or a blank space. X means that it's permitted by right you can go in and do it uh, without further action of the of the this board or the planning commission or anybody. In a it, specified zone. Yes, in, in a specified zone. Yeah, sorry. The, the the column to the left has all the uses. Uh, headings across the top are all the different zones. So then you go and cross reference uh, where where your zone is and what your use is. So like I said, if it's the X, it's permitted by right. If it's an S, then you have to seek a special use permit. And if it's a blank space, then it's prohibited in that zone. And there are many contemplated uses in residential areas for special use uh, um, home occupancy. Yes, that, that's correct. And I, I don't think we go through and specifically define what every single home occupation is, but the zoning, uh, the zoning ordinance does contemplate that there are going to be certain home occupations that are um, useful and appropriate uh, for a given zone, including certain residential zones. Zoned residential. Yes, that's correct. So section nine under the standards for special per, um, permit uses, it does list under section RR home occupations. And there are home occupations that are allowed by right if you're not generating any um, customer traffic. But if you do generate customer traffic, then uh, you would be required to come in for a special use permit. There are uses that are prohibited under all circumstances in residential. And those include automotive repair, kennels because do the uh, noise taxi service gun dealers and charter bus services so it is very specific in, in section nine mm -hmm. there were several comments by residents that there are no special use permits in this neighborhood and i will ask the same question that i ask frequently, it, when even when there's no one in the audience, um, whether the staff has reviewed within a mile radius, within a certain radius of this home, of what, if there have been any special use permits. I'm glad for this question because staff did do the research for this and this was a bit of a confusion it seems like in the audience um, between some of the parties. So when staff did the research for this we wanted to highlight and press the importance that there's two things that we're presenting on and discussing right now. Administrative home occupations that do not generate traffic as Ms. Rush has said if you are going to be if you are not going to be generating traffic or do not require a sign typically these may include like a contractor some type of um, somebody that does business through via phones or an office, those can be approved administratively. Just to clarify, customer traffic. Customer traffic, yes. You could yeah. get UPS deliveries and FedEx yes. deliveries. It's very specific on that type of language as to what would be required to then go to the Board of Zone Appeals. Those are administrative home occupations that can be signed over the counter. Ms. Jaco did do the research for that and did find that there are four active administrative home occupations in the neighborhood. Some doing uh, listed out as office work. Uh, one of them was a cleaning service and the other one was some type of um, some type of e-commerce and so but uh, in review of the special uh, home occupations that were required to come before you all for a home occupation special use permit and we did not find any in that neighborhood um, we did not do a mile radius to do so I think from our quick research uh, through our own files we did not see anything the only types of applications that may have been made were uh, for various variances, but beyond that, there were no home occupations that have been previously approved by this body. So approved and applied for, or has any been applied for and been rejected? We did not, I did not see anything in the record. I don't think Ms. Jaco found anything as well in that. The only, again, the only things that were there that were in this neighborhood or in that nearby area was just for some, a uh, couple variances, but no special use permit applications. None that were applied, none that were recorded as approved.
I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve this um, special use permit. I have heard testimony from the neighbors that this is a great neighborhood. I have heard testimony that there's a lot of walking in this neighborhood, that this is a great place to raise a family. I've also heard testimony from neighbors that there are often strange people in the neighborhood, that there's cars parked in, inconsistently, that traffic is high because people avoid Reeves Rogers and MTSU, that there are businesses in the neighborhood, and that there are vigilant neighbors that take care of each other and make sure that rules aren't broken. Um, because of that, I don't believe an at-home beauty salon is going to impact the substantially or provide an undue adverse impact upon any adjacent property. I don't believe it will change the character of the neighborhood or any traffic conditions. We have not heard from any neighbors a traffic report or provided any expert opinions as to property value, um, which is what we would have to consider in order to make a decision based on traffic or property value. Um, the remaining, um, the remaining conditions that we require um, don't appear to be in conflict, um, but would also be met by this homeowner. And I think it's appropriate for us to um, allow um, for this homeowner to conduct her business there. Um, and that any, and that if we don't, it would be arbitrary considering the other lovely neighborhoods that we have approved businesses that were very similar. Um, and so I move to um, grant this special use permit. Is that motion subject to staff comments? Absolutely, of course. So um, I'm going to second that, and I agree with what Ms. King has laid out. And I think I just wanted to add that in accordance with what you've provided today as well, is that in the limited um, jurisdiction that this board has, I think that, um, that all of the conditions have been met as Ms. King's laid out. So second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Um, as I previously stated, I, I'm, I guess I'm in opposition with the, uh, the other two members um, that I'm going to vote against it just based on the change of character. But uh, I believe we wanted a roll call vote. So uh, I suspect we're not, with not any other comments. We're ready for that. All right. Ms. Foy? Aye. Ms. King? Aye. Chair Young? No. Uh, the application has been approved. Mm -hmm. Um, appreciate everyone's time and, and comments on that. It's, uh, um, next we'll move to staff reports and other business. Give them a second to. I do not have any. <laughs> okay. No staff reports here. All right. Not anymore. We will adjourn.